glove them. Now again, we're either looking at a totally staged event that kicked off a real response, a real reaction, or we're looking at a spontaneous event or an organic event happens all the time in the hood where a police officer actually did overreact to that degree even to his own detriment because he knew with all of the witnesses around you know that would be a very stupid police and there are some but there are also those who uh, would be more discreet about breaking the law on their end happens all the time they break the law all the time but they're usually much more discreet than that okay now emotion can take over your lust for power your power lust your reptilian brain all those things can kick in you know you got extra courage when you strap all all of that can kick in but i find it very difficult uh, to believe now let's look at a few things as i I try to load up several pages so I can see several things at one time, of course. Questions I was asking <clears throat> denied me that access. So I got one page open at a time, and so we're going to be going at a snail's pace. But I wanted to look at uh, a couple of things. Yes, there was an eyewitness uh, who recounts uh, to MSNBC exclusively what he saw. And this was uh, Dorian Johnson, 22, the closest witness to the shooting of Michael Brown on Saturday afternoon. Okay, now, the 11th was Monday, the 10th was Sunday, the 9th would have been Saturday. So this is all following the 8-8, uh, the uh, NASCAR killing. Okay. Okay. Just looking at some things. But, uh... So we do have a person that has stepped out there. Media has promoted as being the closest eyewitness. Okay, he's 22 years old. His name is Dorian Johnson. Okay, so at this point we're going to take their word for that. But again, I'm having some issues believing that all of this is an organic natural incident all right secondly they said that supposedly he was shot because he took a black and mild or blunt wrap or something uh, minuscule like that and again the police put the whoop on you for little or nothing for talking back okay but to brandish your weapon in front of all, all the people that were supposed to be out and blast six times you know it's just it's not adding up then we had anonymous chime in and once anonymous chimed in that took it to another level for me as thinking okay some lies being told here and i'm gonna tell you why anonymous made a threat that was quite ominous they said it wasn't a threat it was promises and in their statement, they encouraged the people to get out in the street <laughs> and take their streets back. Interesting, interesting. How many of Anonymous are black? What type of advice is that? Okay, that advice will lead to, so, you know, what do you do when something like that happens? You know. I know what you don't do. You don't do that. I can tell you what not to do. That's not what you do. Because it's not going to end up good for the people in the hood. They get out there in the street. Uh, they're going to get jailed and beat. And that's how it goes. But so, you know, if, if you're going to have some sort of uh, successful rebellion, okay. It can't start spontaneously like that and be successful. Not against, uh, I mean, a disorganized, spontaneous rebellion will never overthrow uh, trained, practiced, professional killers. 
that's what the popo are. Okay, so it's a setup for failure. Okay, when revolutions happen, they're planned, they're well executed. All right, by uh, those that are trained and ready for real warfare. That's not what we're seeing here. As always, you know, when the lights went out back in the early 2000s, that sounds funny though, early 2000s, but I think it was 2002 or three when we had that big blackout. I remember a lot of, you know, a lot of places got looted. When you have an impoverished community and when that, when that community is uh, minimalized, over a long period of time, and then something happens where security can be breached in a big way. Things like that happen. People gonna take advantage of it. How many people was really out there in the streets because they wanted to take the streets back or they felt like, you know, they were part of a revolution? And how many people was getting out there trying to get what they could get? Because it's rough on them. So, you gotta be for real about these things. The other thing, Anonymous calls them, you know, they said, uh, we are legion. And again, we know, I know what you're supposed to believe they mean, okay? You're supposed to believe they mean because we are many. But again, you're taking a direct quote from a demoniac. And of course, they'll say they're either uh, atheistic or agnostic, I'm sure. But I looked at that and I thought that the fact that they chimed in on it and what they chose to say. So yeah, basically, yeah, keep keep it up, keep going out there. You saw what happened with the Occupy. What happened with Occupy? Where them people at? There's people missing because of Occupy. Okay? Occupy was a setup. When we see things happening like we saw happen with the Arab Spring. Okay? Those of us who notice certain marks and symbols, you look at numbers involved, you look at names involved, you look at the names of places, what those names mean, and, uh, you know, we know that uh, our government will send forces to a place where there is some trouble, where people are disgruntled, and those forces will mingle in among the people and geek them up. We know it happens. It's happening there too. Don't believe it's not happening there. Don't be game goofy. They're running a game. With somebody trying to get you to look left, you better see what's happening on the right. You better. You're going to be jammed up. Okay, let's look at a couple more things. I was interested also in the name, uh, oh, and Anonymous also called for legislation, which I thought that was disingenuous and intellectually dishonest. Because as hacktivists, you mean to tell me, Judge Joe Brown, that they're not hip to the fact that legislation, especially concerning what happens in the hood, ain't going to do no good. You know, this whole thing, you know, this whole thing got to get towed up. So, you know, I'm not, trust me, I'm not the one to be against revolution. But I believe that there's a certain way it must be done. And this ain't it. We're playing right into the hands of the man. Doing exactly what they want you to do. I was told that when you know what the devil trying to get you to do, don't do that. Okay, we gotta look at something. Okay, I want to look at the word Ferguson. And uh, it's meaning, just looking at the word and breaking it down a simple way. See, uh, F, S, P. And then I play with the vowels. Now, I'm trying to find out what uh, the internet will tell me concerning the Latin meaning of the word purgus. You know, let me just jump to what I believe. Fergus of Galloway, okay? Because, see, I wanted to look at Ferguson at first, but I said, no, it's Fergus. Okay, so we do have Fergus trying to get a, a, a... Why didn't he do this first? 
you're right. I should have did it first, but I didn't. But what jumped at me, what I thought about was Purge. And again, we're looking now, because we know that Fergus is a Latin, uh, or has a Latin root. Because I keep getting things about Spanish words and Latin America. Lord Fergus. Okay. That's crazy. Of course, when I'm looking for some Fergus meaning, just flat out. Uh, and I thought about Purge. Of course, the movie The Purge was about what? Lawlessness and anarchy. Law lawlessness and anarchy. Anarchy is no rule. Lawlessness and anarchy is the chaos, the contrived chaos that is to bring the order. Okay, and the New World Order want people to go nuts. Okay, the name Fergus is Gaelic in origin. It comes from an old Gaelic, okay, let's see. Man of strength in Scottish. Okay. First choice, man of strength. There's a Scottish background, let's see. And let's look some more. Ferris. Hmm. Ferrius. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Playing field, battlefield. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Battlefield. Interesting. Let me see, hold on. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing here. Courageous man. Okay, so. Implications, of course, that uh, it has to do with, with uh, bravery or courage. Having a heart in battle. Of course, all of these things do indeed relate to the Bell Martyr we looked at in the first video. The war, they need a war, a civil war in the streets in order to deploy their military, which is going to happen next. And the military is not leaving once they get there. So it has to do with the purge of On, On, uh, named for a Babylonian sun god. And this is what it's really all about. There will be lots of sacrifice. Okay? There will be lots of... Uh, bloodshed and insurrection there and if possible they want to jump it off in other places too and that's going to happen uh, this is what they're going to do and again you know this is not how uh, this is not what revolution looks like okay this is what a setup looks like okay and they're setting up the well-meaning people who come out to support what they think is a worthy cause okay again you don't think with your heart you don't feel with your mind okay they both have to be in the right place for you to operate properly make the right decisions and don't walk into nobody's nets and traps so uh with that being said uh, pray for those people there okay you know, there is, there's a time for action, there's a time for faith, there's a time for works, there's a time for faith. Okay? Now, at this point, do I believe that anyone could come in and calm the people down? Well, yes, I do believe that people could. But what you're going to see happen, I'm sure, especially from Brotherhood members who have a, a platform, is they're going to keep geeking the people up. All right, and look at the result of that. Look at what that will result in. Okay, because the people are gonna take over St. Louis and, and uh, uh, you know take over the government and cause things to be done right there. Is that gonna be the end game? Be able to play the tape out sometime. You know, you, you save yourself a lot of trouble if you can see how things are probably going to end up. Probability, there's possibility and probability. Okay. Anything's possible, but anything ain't probable. Probability is what's likely to happen. 
You know what's likely to happen, what is gonna happen, okay? If then people keep scrapping, you know what's gonna happen, okay? National Guard gonna come in and start capping. And that's gonna happen anyway. At this point, I believe that uh, that is a done deal, okay? That that is also uh, what they wanna happen. When I say that, you know who I'm talking about. There was a, a card game by Steve Jackson. You do yourself good to get a hold to the Illuminati card game. Okay. Uh, just jotting down something here right quick. Get a hold to the Illuminati card game. They talk in the Illuminati card game about different events that end up happening. And they play it like a game. I show you, that, you know. These people don't take us seriously, okay? They think it's a game, literally. But in that card game, you see depictions of everything from the 9-11 strikes of the towers to the hit of the Pentagon. People have related to Boston bombing. Uh, all kind of things that had not yet happened. The oil spill, all kind of things that had not yet happened. The game came out in 96, I believe. All right, people have... Uh, videos on YouTube, at least as of this moment, 8-13-2014, it's the 13th, watch, watch what happens in the news now, lots of funky things going on every day, but people have videos where they show you each card in the deck, when you have the time and the mind, you should go ahead and take a look at those cards. The race war is in the cards as well, baby. And uh, they show a brother in a fez. Okay. All of these things, of course, relating that to the fact that they will play the role of the leadership and they are told what to do. That's the problem with, you know, people say, what's the problem with being in a brotherhood? First of all, you keep a secret. A secret is kept from you until you get up high enough to be trusted with the secret. You got too much to lose to tell it. You're compromised from that point forward. You're going to be told what to do from the top down and you're going to do it. That's the problem. And the things you'll be told to do from the top down, see, when you're just a baby bear square in your lower degrees, you believe that everything is 100 because you see things being done in the community and you see them doing philanthropic things and uh, are supporting certain things that would you know all, appear to be all good to almost anybody but that's when you low as you grow and you begin to know what's really going on for sure uh, what happens is you begin to see more uh, conspiratorial things are being done behind the scenes. They let you in on certain things, okay? But you will be used as a pawn in their agenda. So, uh, that's what the problem is. So when you see brotherhoods all in and throughout black leadership and white leadership, that's the reason that the black and white chessboard game is played the way that it is, to uh, juxtapose one side against the other. Okay? And to get one side to think of some type of way about the other side so they stay clashing. So I, as the person controlling the board, can step back, creep off and do what I need to do. Because I got y'all occupied with each other. And so that's, that's the problem here. And uh, it's working. And it's going to play out. It's going to play out. Uh, when I say play out, I don't mean play out as in get played out and stop or run its course. Uh, but you know, I mean it I mean it's going down. Okay? It's in motion until it runs its course. Um, until it's done doing exactly what the elite want done. Alright? Not what the people in the street want done. So let's not be foolish. So uh you know uh, we ask that the Almighty look favorably upon all of those innocents and well-intended individuals uh, 
who are out there because they believe that uh, they're going to make a change and a difference. It's the same reason I went to Occupy before I realized what Occupy was really all about and doing. And it was only in going out there that I could learn that. So for some people, uh, they're going to learn something by being out there on ground level, on ground zero, uh, and seeing what's happening from the street level. So, you know, I just uh, ask that the Creator reveal all things that are in the darkness and bring them to the light. And that's real talk. I'm going to plug them. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open. Watch for more purges nationwide beside what's happening in Purges Song. So, uh, keep everyone in prayer also here in Detroit. We had two strange torrential rains. I mean, it was really odd uh, how it happened two days straight, the 12th and the 11th, the day Robin Williams died, and then Tuesday. At the same time, and I know it was the same time because I was in my morning routine, and I was at the same point each day in my morning routine. The second day, it began to get kind of dark, and I thought to myself, I wonder is it going to rain hard as it did yesterday? And as I thought that and looked out the window, it started to pour. I mean, almost in sync with uh, what I was starting to think. As I thought that to myself, and here, here comes the rain. And I just felt it was harp. I did. It was so much rain, so hard, so fast, so much lightning, thunder. Uh, things were flooded. Some cars were still left under. The uh, expressways were flooded. In some places, 11 feet high. Yeah. So, some very strange days that we're living in. Indeed, in very strange times. Keep us in prayer here in Detroit as well. Uh, we'll be back with the irregularly scheduled deprogramming, as promised, scripture. Shalom.